Welcome to True Crime Case Files, the podcast that delves deep into the most intriguing criminal cases. In today's episode, we uncover the shocking murder of Lawrence Peters, a successful businessman whose life was cut short by a mysterious illness that turned out to be murder. Join us as we unravel the web of deceit and betrayal in San Mateo, California in September of 2010. Lawrence Peters, a 50-year-old man, was the proud owner of a thriving swimming pool supply company in the city of San Mateo in the Bay Area of Northern California. Known throughout the community for his business acumen, Lawrence was a devoted husband of 20 years to his wife Denise and a loving father to his Stanford student daughter, Jayla. He also adored his role as dog daddy to his beloved Shih Tzu, Richard Davies. Lawrence's aspirations revolved around expanding his business and providing a comfortable life for his family. September 2010 was a time of both innovation and tragedy for the residents of San Mateo. While Lawrence was planning to expand his business, the city was shaken by the San Bruno Pipeline explosion, a disaster that gripped headlines and hearts alike. It was a stark reminder of life's unpredictability, echoing the unforeseen calamity that would soon befall Lawrence himself. Lawrence's business, Alquapools, had gained a reputation for its top-notch products and exceptional customer service. His success had not come easy, though. Years of hard work and dedication had transformed Aquapools into a trusted brand in the swimming pool industry. Lawrence's unwavering commitment to quality and his passion for innovation had earned him the respect of both his peers and his clients. As the days grew shorter and the air turned crisp, his latest pool cleaning robot, the Aqua Sweep 3000, was set to be the star attraction at the local pool and spa expo. Lawrence believed that this revolutionary device would revolutionize the pool maintenance industry, making the tedious task of cleaning pools a thing of the past. Tragically, Lawrence's ambitions were cut short. What was initially thought to be a severe illness revealed itself as something far more sinister, murder. The investigation into his death would uncover a web of deceit that ran deeper than anyone could have imagined, turning the Peter's idyllic life into a true crime case. On September 15, 2010, a serene day in San Mateo, California, the local community was struck by a harrowing event. Lawrence Peters, a 50-year-old entrepreneur known for his thriving swimming pool supply business, Aqua Pools, faced an untimely demise. The businessman, admired for his dedication to family and commerce, succumbed to what was initially believed to be a severe illness in his hospital room, leaving behind a legacy of success and a bewildered community. The illness that claimed Lawrence's life had taken hold three weeks prior, its symptoms escalating rapidly, confounding medical professionals. It was during these critical moments that his wife, Denise Peters, was by his side, witnessing his struggle. In his final moments, Lawrence uttered a puzzling phrase, Was it my wife or my girlfriend? Words that would later echo through the corridors of the investigation. Denise, who had shared two decades of marriage with Lawrence, was engulfed by a wave of emotions. Her reaction was a complex tapestry of shock, sorrow, and a hint of suspicion, reflecting the dual nature of her husband's last words. Despite the turmoil within, she promptly notified the hospital staff, clinging to a sliver of hope for Lawrence's survival. The news of Lawrence's passing reverberated beyond the confines of the hospital. In a town still reeling from the recent San Bruno pipeline explosion, this personal tragedy added to the collective sense of loss. The incident, which had dominated headlines just days earlier, now shared space with the mysterious circumstances surrounding Lawrence's death. As the investigation unfolded, it became apparent that Lawrence's demise was not a mere twist of fate, but the result of foul play. The community, which had once seen Lawrence as a pillar of entrepreneurial spirit, now grappled with the grim reality that his life had been deliberately cut short. In the backdrop of this personal tragedy, the world continued to turn, a stark contrast to the somber mood that had settled over San Mateo. The case of Lawrence Peters, a man who had aspired to elevate his business to the heights of such household names, had instead become a subject of true crime lore, leaving behind a family, a pet, and a tale of intrigue that would captivate and confound all who heard it. The investigation into the death of Lawrence Peters, a prominent businessman, 
began in earnest on September 15, 2010. Detectives O'Reilly and Ying arrived at the San Mateo Hospital, where Lawrence had breathed his last. The room, a sterile environment typical of medical facilities, showed no immediate signs of criminal activity. Yet the detectives were not convinced this was a natural death. As they calmed through the room, the detectives took note of every detail. The IV stand, the beeping monitors now silent, and the personal effects that seemed untouched. They collected samples, knowing that the smallest clue could be the key to solving the case. The initial medical reports were vague, but toxicology would later confirm their suspicions. Lawrence had been poisoned. The question of who could commit such a heinous act loomed large. Lawrence was a well-respected figure, his company Aqua Dynamics, a known name in the South Bay area. He was a family man with a wife and a daughter, and even his pet Shih Tzu, Richard Davies, who was a beloved fixture in his life. Detectives O'Reilly and Yang faced a daunting task. They needed to piece together Lawrence's final weeks, scrutinize his personal and professional relationships, and construct a timeline that could lead them to the perpetrator. The community watched, waited, and wondered who among them could be responsible for such a betrayal. As the investigation unfolded, the detectives would find themselves delving into a complex web of deceit, where business rivalries and personal vendettas blurred the lines between friend and foe. The case of Lawrence Peters was not just a local crime story, it was a narrative that would capture the attention of true crime enthusiasts. In Lawrence Peters' murder, all eyes turned to his wife, Denise Peters, as the prime suspect. At the age of 52, Denise managed a vegan bookstore in downtown San Mateo, California. She was not just Lawrence's wife, but as a published author of a popular young adult sci-fi novel, Althea and the Federation of Light, Denise was a figure of cultural significance in her own right. The police interrogated Denise with a sense of urgency, trying to uncover any possible motive for the murder. As they delved into her background, they discovered that Denise and Lawrence had been married for 20 years, seemingly living a life of wedded bliss. However, beneath the surface, there were whispers of marital discord. According to the American Center for Family Relationships, 85% of married Americans have cheated on their spouse, and Denise was no different. They discovered that Denise had been having an affair with a local businessman, Jamie Trevelyan. Jamie, an 85-year-old entrepreneur who owned a chain of successful coffee shops in the Bay Area, was known for his charismatic personality and connections within the community. The police believed that this affair could be the key to understanding the motive behind Lawrence's murder. As the investigation unfolded, the detectives uncovered a series of sexually explicit text messages exchanged between Denise and Jamie during the weeks leading up to Lawrence's death. These messages hinted at a strained relationship between Denise and her husband, with discussions about leaving Lawrence and starting a new life together. The detectives also discovered that Denise had taken out a life insurance policy on Lawrence just a few months before his death, raising further suspicions. To gather more evidence, the police interviewed friends, family, and employees of both Denise and Lawrence. They discovered that Lawrence had found out about the affair before his illness and confronted Denise about it. This revelation had caused significant tension in their marriage, leading many to believe that Denise had a motive to eliminate Lawrence. As the investigation continued, the police sought to corroborate Denise's alibi during the time of Lawrence's death. They reviewed surveillance footage from the hospital and interviewed hospital staff who had interacted with Denise during that period. However, there were no solid leads or evidence to conclusively prove or disprove her involvement in the crime. As the detectives delved deeper, they considered every possibility. Was it a crime of passion, a result of a love triangle, hinted at by Lawrence's cryptic last words? Or was it a calculated move to gain control of Lawrence's successful business, Aqua Dynamics? The answers were not forthcoming. As the investigation into the shocking murder of Lawrence Peters unfolded, another suspect emerged from the shadows. Dr. Francesca Luulhati, a 39-year-old doctor at the hospital where Lawrence had met his untimely demise, became the focus of intense scrutiny. The revelation that Dr. Luulhati was Lawrence's secret girlfriend sent shockwaves through the community and added a new layer of complexity to the case. 
Dr. Luol Hadi was a respected physician, known for her dedication and expertise in the field of internal medicine. She had been working at San Mateo Hospital for five years, earning the trust and admiration of her colleagues. Friends and co-workers described her as intelligent, hardworking, and compassionate. However, beneath the surface, a web of secrets was about to unravel. The police wasted no time in bringing Dr. Luol Hadi in for questioning. The interrogation room was tense as Detectives O'Reilly and Yin delved into the doctor's personal life, searching for any possible motive for the murder. Dr. Luol Hadi vehemently denied any involvement, her anger palpable as she defended her innocence. During the interrogation, it was revealed that Dr. Luol Hadi and Lawrence had been involved in a clandestine sexual affair for over a year. Their relationship had blossomed in the shadows, hidden from prying eyes. The detectives probed deeper, trying to understand the dynamics of their secret romance. They discovered that the affair had been fraught with tension and secrecy, as Lawrence struggled to balance his commitment to his wife and family with his desire for a passionate connection with Dr. Luol Hadi. As the investigation continued, the detectives uncovered a series of text messages exchanged between Lawrence and Dr. Luol Hadi in the weeks leading up to his death. These messages painted a picture of a troubled relationship, filled with jealousy, suspicion, and betrayal. Lawrence had confided in a close friend about his fears that Dr. Luol Hadi was becoming increasingly possessive and volatile. The detectives also discovered that Dr. Luol Hadi had recently purchased a bottle of a powerful sedative, commonly used in hospitals for anesthesia. This raised suspicions about her possible involvement in Lawrence's death. However, Dr. Luol Hadi maintained that the sedative was intended for professional use and vehemently denied any sinister intentions. As the investigation reached its critical juncture, the police were left with more questions than answers. Was Dr. Luol Hadi a scorned lover seeking revenge? Or was she an innocent bystander caught in a web of deceit? The truth remained elusive, hidden behind a veil of secrecy and betrayal. The investigation into the mysterious murder of Lawrence Peters took a dramatic turn on September 20, 2010, when a crucial piece of evidence was discovered. The weather that day was gloomy, mirroring the somber mood of the investigation team as they delved deeper into the case. Detectives O'Reilly and Ying were meticulously combing through the office of Dr. Francesca Luol Hadi, a 39-year-old doctor at the hospital where Lawrence had tragically passed away and his secret lover. It was during this search that they stumbled upon a vial of radium hidden among the doctor's belongings. Radium, a highly radioactive substance, was once used in various medical treatments and industrial applications. Its discovery in Dr. Luol Hadi's office sent shockwaves through the investigative team, raising serious questions about her possible involvement in Lawrence's death. To fully understand the significance of this finding, it is important to delve into the background of radium and its potential implications in a murder case. Featured in the Oscar-winning film Oppenheimer, radium emits harmful radiation, which can cause severe health issues, including cancer. Its usage in medical treatments has been largely phased out due to its dangerous nature. The discovery of the vial of radium in Dr. Luol Hadi's possession raises several intriguing questions. How did she acquire this highly restricted substance? What was her motive for possessing it? And most importantly, could radium have been the deadly poison that claimed Lawrence's life? As the investigation team delves deeper into Dr. Luol Hadi's involvement, they are meticulously examining her personal and professional connections. They are leaving no stone unturned in their quest for the truth. Interviews with colleagues, patients, and acquaintances of Dr. Luol Hadi are being conducted to shed light on her character and possible motives. The discovery of the vial of radium injected new life into the investigation, providing a potential breakthrough in unraveling the mystery behind Lawrence Peter's murder. Detectives O'Reilly and Ng were determined to follow every lead, meticulously piecing together the puzzle of this perplexing crime. As the investigation intensifies, the truth inches closer to the surface. Will Dr. Luol Hadi's connection to the radium vial be the key that unlocks the secrets of Lawrence's untimely demise? In the investigation into the shocking murder of Lawrence Peters, a new suspect emerged, 
Lyle Deacon, a 35-year-old nurse at the hospital in San Mateo, California, where Lawrence tragically passed away. Unbeknownst to his colleagues, Lyle has a dark past as an ex-felon from Minnesota, where he committed a series of fatal poisonings at a previous hospital. The police were now focusing their attention on Lyle, exploring his personality, dreams, and potential motives in order to uncover the truth behind Lawrence's untimely demise. Lyle Deacon, a tall and wiry man with a brooding demeanor, had been working at the hospital for just over a year. Colleagues described him as introverted and mysterious, often keeping to himself during his shifts. He was known for his meticulous attention to detail when it came to patient care, but little did anyone suspect the darkness that lurked beneath his calm exterior. During the police interrogation, Lyle vehemently denied any involvement in Lawrence's murder. He claimed that his troubled past was behind him and that he had turned his life around. However, the investigators were not convinced and delved deeper into his background. The detectives discovered that Lyle had been released from prison just a few months before he started working at the San Mateo Hospital. His criminal record revealed a history of poisoning patients at a hospital in Street Paul, Minnesota, which resulted in multiple deaths. The media had dubbed him the Midwest Menace during the trial that followed. As the investigation progressed, the police uncovered a disturbing pattern. It was revealed that Lyle had a fascination with toxic substances and had been secretly researching various poisons online. They also discovered a hidden stash of chemicals in his apartment, including a vial of cyanide, a deadly poison. The detectives meticulously combed through Lyle's work history, interviewing former colleagues and patients from the Minnesota hospital. They found chilling similarities between the poisonings that occurred there and Lawrence's death. The victims had all exhibited similar symptoms, and the timeline of events matched up. The evidence against Lyle Deacon was mounting, but the investigators knew they needed more to prove his guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. They continued to gather witness statements, comb through financial records, and analyze phone records for any connections to Lawrence or the other suspects. As the investigation into Lawrence Peters' murder intensified, the police remained determined to uncover the truth and bring the perpetrator to justice. With Lyle Deacon now firmly in their sights, the detectives were leaving no stone unturned in their pursuit of justice for Lawrence and his grieving family. After an intense investigation, the police finally cracked the case of Lawrence Peters' murder. The mastermind behind this heinous crime had been identified as none other than Dr. Francesca Luolhati, a 39-year-old doctor at the hospital where Lawrence tragically passed away. The motive behind this shocking act of violence stems from a web of deceit and betrayal. It was revealed that Dr. Luolhati was not only Lawrence's secret girlfriend, but also harbored deep feelings of anger and resentment towards him as a result of her severe case of codependency syndrome. In a fit of rage and vengeance, she decided to poison him, putting an end to his life and shattering the dreams of his family. The evidence against Dr. Luol Hadi was compelling. On September 20, 2010, the police made a breakthrough discovery in her office. Hidden away, they found a vial of radium, a highly toxic substance that can cause severe harm to the human body. This revelation sent shockwaves through the investigation team, providing a crucial link between Dr. Luol Hadi and the murder of Lawrence Peters. The arrest of Dr. Luol Hadi took place on a stormy evening, reminiscent of the dark cloud that had loomed over Lawrence's family since his untimely demise. The police, acting swiftly and decisively, apprehended the doctor, who was taken aback by her own arrest. The moment was captured by the local news vans of KGO and KNTV, with cameras flashing and reporters clamoring for the latest details on this sensational case. As the news of Dr. Luol Hattie's arrest spread, Lawrence's family experienced a mix of relief and grief. Relief that the person responsible for their loved one's murder had been brought to justice, but also grief for the loss they had suffered. Their lives will never be the same but at least they found solace in knowing the truth about what happened to Lawrence. This shocking crime and its subsequent investigation served as a reminder that even in seemingly ordinary lives, dark secrets can lurk, leading to tragic consequences. The story of Lawrence Peters' murder will forever be etched in the annals of true crime, a cautionary tale of betrayal and the pursuit of justice.
The trial that followed the shocking murder of Lawrence Peters in September 2010 was a gripping courtroom drama that captivated many true crime geeks in the Bay Area. Dr. Francesca Luul Hadi, the mastermind behind Lawrence's untimely demise, faced the consequences of her heinous act as the prosecution presented a compelling case against her. Prosecutor Bertram Holbert Toole, a seasoned legal expert known for his meticulous approach, skillfully outlined the motive behind the murder. He painted a picture of a woman consumed by anger and betrayal, seeking revenge against a man she once loved. With the help of expert witnesses and compelling evidence, Holbert Toole established a strong case against Dr. Lul Hadi. Defense attorney Lisa Betchworth, known for her tenacity and ability to create doubt, fought tooth and nail to establish reasonable doubt. Betchworth questioned the credibility of the evidence, pointing out potential flaws in the investigation. She argued that the vial of radium found in Dr. Lul Hadi's office could have been planted by someone else with malicious intent. Despite her efforts, the weight of the evidence against Dr. Luul Hadi proved too substantial to overcome. Throughout the trial, Lawrence's grieving family sat in a courtroom, seeking justice for their beloved husband and father. Their emotions ran high as they listened to the testimonies and examined the evidence. The pain of their loss was palpable as they clung to the hope that justice would be served. The trial lasted for weeks, with the media closely following. News outlets such as the San Mateo Tribune and the local TV station, Channel 7 News, provided daily updates on the proceedings. The courtroom was packed with reporters, eager to capture every moment of the trial for the public. After careful consideration of the evidence presented by both sides, the jury deliberated for several days. On a tense afternoon, the verdict was delivered. Dr. Francesca Luul Hadi was found guilty of the murder of Lawrence Peters. The courtroom erupted in a mix of relief and grief as Lawrence's family finally received the justice they had longed for. The sentencing that followed left a lasting impact on both the murderer and the victim's families. Judge Lee Thornburg, known for her no-nonsense approach to justice, handed down a sentence of life imprisonment without the possibility of parole. The courtroom fell silent as the weight of the sentence sank in, leaving Dr. Luul Hadi with no chance of redemption. The trial of Dr. Francesca Luul Hadi and the subsequent verdict and sentencing marked the end of a tragic chapter in the lives of Lawrence Peters' family. The nation watched as justice was served and debates about the adequacy of the punishment and the concept of justice raged on. After the dramatic conclusion of the trial, the lives of all those involved took a significant turn. Denise Peters, Lawrence's wife, was faced with the harsh reality of her husband's infidelity and the pain of losing him. She sought solace in the support of her close-knit community in San Mateo, California, who rallied around her during this difficult time. Dr. Francesca Luul Hadi, the mastermind behind Lawrence's murder, faced the consequences of her actions. She was sentenced to serve time in the California State Women's Prison, where she would spend her days reflecting on the choices that led her down a dark path. Lawrence's family and friends slowly began to heal, finding solace in the cherished memories they had of him. They organized a memorial service to celebrate his life and honor his legacy. The service took place at the Stanford Memorial Church, a place Lawrence held dear to his heart. Friends and family shared heartfelt stories and anecdotes, reminiscing about his kindness, generosity, and love for his family. In the months following the trial, Denise made the difficult decision to sell Lawrence's swimming pool supply company. She wanted to start anew and create a different future for herself and her daughter. In the years that followed, Lawrence's family and friends slowly rebuilt their lives. They found solace in the memories they shared and the knowledge that justice had been served. While the pain of losing Lawrence would never fully fade, they were determined to honor his memory by living their lives to the fullest and cherishing the time they had together. And so concludes the tragic tale of Lawrence Peters, a man whose dying words sparked a murder investigation that unraveled a web of secrets and betrayal. Join us next time as we delve into another captivating true crime case. Stay tuned for more episodes of True Crime Case Files, where we uncover the darkest mysteries. Hey, true crime case solvers, interested in more real-life murder mysteries? Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel.
And do you have any thoughts about this case or have a case of your own you'd like us to investigate? Leave us a comment. Until then, stay safe true crime case solvers.